friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kat. I love to share about all the awesome romance novels that I read here on my channel. I would love for you to consider subscribing so you can hang around here on the regular, get lots of great recommendations, at least that's my hope. <laughs> that I give you guys good recommendations. And today's video is one of my very favorite authors. I'm so excited to talk about it. When I'm filming this, the book was released about a week ago and you guys, it is flying up the charts. She just, there is a reason why she's my unicorn author. The book we're gonna talk about today is Ferrara by Tail Swan. <laughs> Let's get right into it because holy smokes, I finished the book on release day, but it took me a little time to digest it and sit down and figure out exactly how and what I wanted to say about it. This book affected me a little bit differently than her other books, and I was trying really hard to figure out why. I really do wish I had time to read The Italian before I started Ferrara. It's a standalone, it's not marketed as a series, although in my opinion, you really should read The Italian first. You get a little bit more background, you'll know a little bit more about what's going on. And I wish I could have, my reading schedule, you guys, is so jam-packed that I didn't have time to do that. It was not hard for me to get back into this world, even though, is the Italian two years old now maybe? I, I can't remember exactly. But there was one big glaring thing that I kind of forgot. <laughs> and I was like, wait, wait, I don't remember that. <laughs> but it was okay because I knew that, oh, and I'm gonna dance around. I'm gonna dance around a few things in this video. As a fan of hers, I never wanna give you guys a direct spoiler. And there's a couple of things in this book that I feel like if I talk about, it's going to give the whole book away. So I'm not going to do that. But I will say that I forgot like this one big glaring thing. And I was like, oh no. But I knew that she was, I knew what I thought wasn't, I knew what I thought I forgot actually happened, but that it was going to be okay. <laughs> You know what I mean? If you guys read the book, you know. If you haven't read the book, <laughs> Ferrara is about Giuliano and Francesca. We got the bit of them at the end of the Italian. The, Ferrara starts with that, all of that that we know and the scenes that we saw, but in greater detail. Right off the bat, when they meet, there's something really magical about them. They're young. They're, oof, is Francesca 17, maybe? And, and Giuliano's 19-ish. So they're young. They meet each other. They have stars in their eyes. They're actually at Enrico Ferrara's house. And they're there under some circumstances that they're not really sure why they're there. But Francesca is Enrico's younger sister. And then they know Giuliano's family and they've come over to discuss some family business. So they it's the first time they meet and they're like, whoo, I love the tension in all of this. Giuliano says about Francesca upon meeting her. Seriously, she's the hottest girl I've ever seen in my life. She makes me feel nervous and I'm never effing nervous. Hello, I force myself to say, hi. I try to hide my delighted smile and fail miserably. And to think I didn't want to come today. Her brow furrows. Why do you say that? Well, before I can stop myself, I whisper, if I didn't come, I wouldn't have got to meet you. And you're just so, I shrug as, as the words fail me. Beautiful. Okay, he's cute, right? And then Francesca says, he's unlike anyone I've ever known. Funny, sweet, and intelligent and open, so unlike the men in my family. The thing that we know about Francesca's family is that her brother Enrico, and then she has two other brothers, are basically the Italian mob. So when she says that, I understood. She is the sheltered younger sister. 
they have bodyguards. They are not, she lives a very small existence. She has one really good friend, Anna. Of course, shining relationship in the book is Francesca's relationship with Anna. T excels at writing female relationships and it was exactly the same in this book as well. Like I said, there is tension and the families don't really want them hanging out together. They meet sort of secretly because they can feel that they like each other. But oops, like <laughs> it comes to head. Enrico finds out they're, they're spending time together and this is what he says. It's from Giuliano's perspective. Enrico pushes Francesca into the back of a waiting car. I step forward. You cannot keep her from me, I demand. You go near her again and I will kill you. <laughs> okay, big brother. And then a little bit later, it's 1 a.m. and I lie in the darkness. Francesca hasn't called me and I'm beside myself. I have to know if she's okay. I dial her number. It rings once. You were warned, Enrico growls. My eyes widen in horror. Oh no, he found the phone. Prepare to die, effer. <laughs> okay, I know that that was supposed to be like a stressful scene, but like that made me laugh. <laughs> T's dialogue is always so amazing. And can't you just picture that in your head? Like he's sitting in his room and he's like waiting for her to call and she's not calling and the day has been rather stressful because they've been busted and then Enrico picks up the phone her Francesca's phone when he calls I laughed out loud at that so there's this big hurdle in the way of why they can't be together they it's not unrequited they're both into each other but it's just not meant to be but they're both devastated their worlds have been completely blown apart. It was really emotional. And <laughs> again, it's a really, really big hurdle to get over. It broke my heart. And I couldn't wait to see how T was gonna untie that knot. This is what Giuliano says. And oh my God, it was so sad. Nightfall, the bringer of evil. At the going down of the sun, dark thoughts have rolled in. And as the whole world peacefully sleeps, mine has come to a crashing and devastating halt. Oh, oh my God, it really has. So much of the beginning of this book I loved. There's so much tension, there's so much angst, there's the beautiful first love, just being so adoring of each other, the sneaking away that they have, and then it comes to a screeching halt. And it's like, Oh crap. A little bit later, the book picks up 10 years later. Holy crap. They're like whole adults. A lot of growth. They have both lived life. And unfortunately, Giuliano's mom has passed away. They have not spoken. They have not spoken at all. But Francesca feels like she needs to go support him. I loved that about her. I loved Francesca wholeheartedly. That's never an issue with T's books. I connect with her women so much. And I understood why she wanted to go and be there for Giuliano. It made me nervous, but I, if I was her, I would have done the same thing. The turmoil that ensues after her going to his mom's funeral, oh, let me tell you, I had a stomach ache in this book that literally never went away. The whole book, it made my stomach hurt. I was a stress ball. The tension, the angst, oh my God, the angst. This is by far, and I know I said that in my social, on a social media post, this is by far the angstiest book she's ever written. So there was a part in this book that I found hard to get over. And I debated whether I wanted to talk about it because I feel like it was such a big roadblock for me. And I understood why T wrote it the way she did. But for me to be able to move through it and past it 
like Francesca did, for me personally, I needed resolution that never came. And I don't hold that against T. That's the way she wrote her story. But it was such a big thing for me. It was such a trigger for me that I, it stood in the way of me completely falling in love with Giuliano like I have with so many of her other male characters. So basically, Anna, Francesca's best friend, shows her something on the internet. And if you've read the book, you know what it is. And how he reacts to, how Giuliano reacts to Francesca calling him on it, I didn't like. Now, I understood that it spoke to his character and where he was in life, where he's grown as a man, having the world at his feet, being able to do whatever the F he wants with women, with life. He is in char large and in charge of his world, right? And that situation lent itself to that. I understood all that. I can justify that in my head, but my heart can't justify it. How he talked about it and they talked about it after that, it was very upsetting to me. I'm sad that it stood in the way of me being able to embrace and fall in love with Giuliano the way I usually do with her characters. Something like this has kind of happened before. We're not going to love every single moment of every single book of every single character of your favorite author. But it took the shine off of Giuliano for me. And it frustrated me with him. I kind of felt the same way a little bit in things with Brock, things with Sebastian, things with Jameson, and now Giuliano. That being said, if you average that out with all of her books, I love more of her men than I don't. That doesn't mean that there weren't things that I loved about each of those characters and Giuliano. There is so much I loved about him, but there was always, there's been one thing or two things about each of those other characters and him that didn't, I couldn't let my walls down completely with them. And that's okay. That's totally fine. But I wanted in this situation, I wanted him to fix that. Dude, take care of it, get rid of it. And he never did. And I think for me, if he would have, I would have trusted him more with my heart. But because he never did, I couldn't trust him 100%. Although I knew this book and the story would totally work out, right? Oh, my heart just went through the ringer with them, right? This is from Francesca's point of view. It's shortly after she's gone to Giuliano's mom's funeral and they're having an interaction. You could just feel feel them. It was so sad and heartbreaking. Are you trying to hurt me, I spit? If I was trying to hurt you, his dark eyes hold mine, I would marry someone else. We stare at each other. Raw emotion runs between us. That's not fair. He pauses as if composing himself. F off back to France and get married, Francesca. I don't want to see you again. Your vanilla lifestyle is boring to me. My heart stops. What? I'm not interested in what you have to say, I stare at him as I battle tears. I had heard that he had changed. I would heard that he was now cold and heartless, but I never imagined. Oh, hearing those words out loud hurt more than they should. Fine. I stand still on the spot waiting for him to say something. They just can't. It is all rough edges with them. And it broke my heart. And then a little bit later from Giuliano's perspective. Amber says something and glances over and smiles softly at me, and I take her hand in mine across the table. I roll my lips, disheartened by my recent feelings for her, or lack thereof. Everything always starts out so good, and then it's like a switch goes off in my brain, and I can't do it. I'm ready. I want to go there. I want to fall madly in love and have the earth move when she looks at me. 
She's beautiful and perfect and worships the ground I walk on. Brazilian, sweet, sexy, and kind with a hot as F accent. She's got everything I should want, but I just, I don't even know what the problem is. If I knew I would fix it. I'm sick to effing death of feeling like something is missing. Oh, now, whew, let me tell you, Giuliano is deep. He is, and I loved that about him. And I loved how he loved Francesca. But it's a very thin line with him between love and hate. And he treats Francesca like he hates her because he loves her and he can't have her. But yet he's missing her in his life so much. And they still have this connection 10 years later. You guys, oh my God, it was like the turmoil, the stomach ache, the heartbreak. The push and pull between them is out of control. <laughs> like, ooh. And you can't understand why the world would be so cruel as to put them in each other's lives for them not to be able to have each other. Ugh, oh my gosh. And how Francesca feels. They're both emotionally raw every time they're around each other. Eventually they come to a little like peace agreement. They try to find a way to spend time together, but where nobody else kind of knows their business, just kind of thinks that they're friends. And there's this one point where they go out to dinner and, you know, with their common friends, they have a great night, but yet they're both pining for each other all night. They're jealous of Anna and Carlo, that they're able to be more. Francesca decides she wants to go home. He brings her back to her apartment. He's like, aren't you gonna ask me in because I didn't get to dance with my girl tonight? And then they're dancing to I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> like that song is a freaking gold mine, right? I hear that song. First of all, Whitney Houston was arguably one of the best singers of our lifetime, right? I know it's a Dolly Parton song, but there's something about the way Whitney sings it that just the goosebumps all the way up and down anytime you hear it. That song just like can bring you to your knees. Often in T's books, there's a song mentioned that will just take you right back to after you finish the book and then you hear that song. In other books like Stanton series, it's Dark Horse by Katy Perry. It's Say Something by Great Big World and Christina Aguilera. In um, Dr. Stanton, it's, isn't it Despacito? <laughs> by Justin Bieber and the Latin American guy. I can't remember what his name is. Shoot, now I can't remember more. She just always <laughs> puts a song in there. And I really appreciate that because I always go right back there. The last quarter of this book, lots of action, lots of drama. Oh my God. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, and you know, I read before bed. So I was like, whoo, you know what I mean? I actually was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sleep after this. There were some twists and turns there. Everything was not rainbows and butterflies, but it all worked out. Let me know if you have read Ferrara by Teal Swan, if you've read The Italian, or any of Teal Swan's other books. I would love to know which one's your favorite. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you come over and say hi on my social media. I am Cat Rees Romance on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And I also have a private Facebook group, which is Cat's Romance Readers, and that all those links will be down in the description box below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you very soon. Bye.